should we put these in the boat now, or should we? Shots. I'm Joe Cermelli reporting today from beautiful Colorado, about 10 miles from the town of Kremlin. Behind me, that's the Colorado River, just downstream of Gore Canyon. Now this is a very special trip for me, I'm really jazzed about it, it's kind of long overdue. I'm out here fishing with the Fly Talk boys, Tim Romano and Kirk Dieter. Now, I'm not really 100% sure that they think this East Coast boy can actually fly fish, so I finally got on a plane, flew out to Denver, and here I am to prove that I can actually cast a fly rod. So far, we've made camp upriver, stocked our campsite. Today we float, tomorrow we wade. I would suggest pulling massive streamers. The thing about streamer fishing that's so fun and compelling for so many anglers, especially here in Colorado, is, you know, when you're fishing dry flies or nymph fishing, you're, you're spoon feeding the insect to the trout. And it's coming down the river and it has to look totally helpless and lifeless and the trout comes up and eats it. Streamer fishing on the other hand is completely reversed in that the, the bait fish are gathered against the shoreline and they're, they're charging away from the trout. So the, the trout are going to grab them with fer ferocious takes. Eat it, eat it. I can't, oh! Come on, you son It just ignites the whole experience with turning these otherwise timid and very wary fish into the predators that they can be. Let's go get it. Let's get a big brown trout come out and whack this streamer. Right up there in that little bit of fast water. We've, we've come a long way since then, but couldn't exactly stop there. Now we're chasing them down the bank. I started to feel like we're nowhere to see this battle for this. When I like the moment for your family practice of someone who run, it hurts, it smells, building blocks of the top of it. The taste is so familiar, I must have myself a drink. It's burnt, it plays. So Melly can fly fish. So I'm waiting all day for that one, but it's been a beautiful float so far, and it's only day one, so that's not bad. That is actually awesome. Another little fish. Not as big as the last one. Bunk. There you go, man. Sweet. Brown. Sweet. God, that's creepy. It's <laughs> <laughs> like a little rain out over the mountains this morning. Windy last night, Tim? Just a touch. I thought I was worried about uh, snoring from YouTube, but I was wrong. The 40 mile an hour gusts that were collapsing my tent were more of the issue. <laughs> Today we're hiking up in a Gore Canyon, fishing the other bank that nobody else fishes, according to Tim, which is working out for us uh, so far. A little windy, it's rainy, then it's sunny, but uh, comes to the territory out here. Key things to know, know about fishing Colorado in the fall, this time of year, is that the conditions change very quickly. In other words, you can have bright sunny skies and hoppers flying in the river one, at one time of the day, and three hours later, a storm could blow in. That could be a good thing because it could bring mist and rain and, and that could spring a uh, betis hatch, for example. Once I found you, girl, was my first reaction. But as all things run, girl, is that how it happens? It's blowing about. 
about 40 miles per hour through this canyon right now. Gore Canyon can be notoriously windy like it is today, 40 mile an hour plus gusts. When you're casting a nymph rig, you really don't want to do too many false casts. One or two false casts, I like to try to just limit it to one. Let the water do the work, take a cast, let it drift, let all your line out and just roll cast it upstream. So two minutes after we filmed that, I'm fishing upstream, trying to throw a hopper in the wind. I look up, moose is coming directly across the run at me. I'm trying to take a couple pictures, pack it up. By the time I look up, he's on the river. I'm sprinting down to Joe, and the moose is following me. I'm Day three of the Colorado adventure. The uh, trout mobile is totally trashed after two days of running around the mountains. We're gonna go in the fly shop, get some things, and then we're off to the North Fork of the South Platte. All right, I'm just getting started. One break off. I didn't tie the rig, by the way. <laughs> it's a nice rainbow. So Melly can fly fish. Let's go find some more. The trick is you got to be patient around here because if you go fishing the runs before the action is supposed to take place, in other words, the dry fly action brings the fish up. All you're gonna do is put the fish down for the rest of the day, so it's better to be patient and wait for the dry fly action to unfold and then be in the right spot at the right time. came out to Colorado for. That is an awesome rainbow. Just sip that little uh, little dropper nymph right underneath that dry fly. That is about as good as it gets. It's been an awesome three days with Kirk and Tim. I want to thank both those guys for getting me into fish like that and just showing me uh, everything Colorado has to offer. My friend, great three days. Tim, you're on the camera, but you rock too. Thanks for checking out this episode of Hook Shots. Don't know where we'll be next, but join us then. I'm Joe Cermelli. And I'm too close to Dieter's hole here. It's a bad place to be. <laughs> <laughs>